Get the f*** out of here! <laughs> Go home! We don't want you here. We don't like your kind here. We only like people in blue cars around here. One more. Don't honk at me. <laughs> don't honk at me, asshole. <laughs> the gate is open. Time to go through. Are you ready for what's on the other side? No. Nope. <laughs> God dang it. You know, I've... The anti-work is something that I've got very little experience in. Because I've always tried to stick up and try and, like, do my best to work. Like, do my best to, like, work and set a good precedence for myself. Like, I, I try not to half-ass anything. And, honestly, the only time I've really been anti-work is whenever the job really got under my skin. And I was just like, I can't be here anymore. And instead of leading them on and giving, like, and all that, I'm just like, nah, I'm done. Bye. And then, yeah. Yeah, I've done the same thing multiple occasions but yeah I it's like uh, especially with call center jobs it's the one call center job I was just like yeah I, I, I don't really like hate this job with all my being but I definitely don't like it and I just got offered one closer to my house for more money so I guess I'm gonna go do that instead yeah and when I went in, I told the guy, I was like, I start that new job in like two weeks and I have enough money that I'd actually like to just go ahead and take two weeks off. And y'all don't seem like you really need me that bad down here. And he's like, oh, it's totally fine, man. Mm. I was like, cool. So I'm just going to go chill for two weeks. Then I went to the new one and I barely got through training and stuff before I was like, this is the worst fucking hell job I've ever been at. Yeah. You know, pretty much you know I was like I would like Christmas off to be with my family please and they're like nope no <clears throat> so, so the first time ever in my life I had to go work on Christmas and I was just like pulling into the parking lot on Christmas morning and I hated the job so bad and it gave me so much anxiety that I opened my car door and hurled in the parking lot and I was like you know what no I ain't doing this yeah for me I left went... and went back home for Christmas with my family when I was working at AT and T, I literally was I I did everything I could to try and meet the quotas and everything of what management wanted for like me. This was back when AT and T bought Direct TV, and it was it went it became a requirement for you to sell Direct TV. And I'm like, I work in I, I work in like phone repairs and uh, and like te and like tech support. Why the hell would people want to buy Direct TV from me? It's like, it doesn't matter. It's like you're you're supposed to sell it. I'm like, I... and I literally just didn't know what like what to do. And then eventually they were just like, well, we're thinking about taking you out of tech support and putting you here. Uh, I'm like, but why? Like, I love doing tech support. Tech support's what I'm really good at. And there's like, well, you're not making enough sales for us to really, uh, you know keep you here and all that I'm like yeah fuck this dude why do I have to sell televisions or te like television subscription services when I'm working on friggin cell phones yeah I'd be like I didn't apply to this job for sales you didn't hire me as sales this is bullshit and I ain't fucking doing it also not only that but I was hired and I got I was getting paid like $13 an hour Two like two people who started at who started the same class as me. One like I had at that point ten plus years of experience. I uh, like or not ten plus, more like almost ten years. I'd say eight years of experience in call centers. And the thing is, I had eight years of experience in call centers and I used to work for Sprint. And I come here to this new job, and I'm, they're paying me $13 an hour, which is $4 less an hour than what I was getting paid at Sprint. And I thought that was bullshit, but oh well. It's a job, and I need it. And then, all of a sudden, I talk to these these other people in class. For this one person, okay, this girl, it was her first job. Her first job out of high school. 
She'd never worked a job before. She gets hired there at AT and T. You know how much she starts making an hour? Sixteen. Yes, a woman in no, with no prior experience and working her first job at nineteen years old, uh, like first full time job work, you know, at nineteen years old, is starting out getting paid sixteen dollars an hour, and me having more than eight years of experience in it, I was only getting paid thirteen. Sounds fun, right? Oh, gets better. There's another woman. Uh, it's her first ever job in a call center. She's like a couple years younger than me. I think she was like 20, 22, 23 at the time. And she basically says, yeah, I've never done tele, like, like telemarketing or anything like that before. And I was just like, well, how much are you getting paid? And she says, oh, I'm getting paid 17. So, yeah. Did you bring it up to your bosses? I did. And they told me, and they basically said to me, it's just like, you're not supposed to ask that. I would be like, yeah, because you guys don't want to actually pay us fair wages, so uh, you can either pay me a fair wage or I'm leaving. I asked them like for a raise immediately because I was like, I think it's unfair the fact that I have all this experience in call centers and this and that, and y'all are paying me this. And it's like, well, contractually you're obligated to fulfill your end of this, and like we're not going to pay you anything extra until this. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Because you're literally paying people who have zero experience working in call centers like, this much, but yet you're going to be paying me. It's like, well, at and is a bit different than other call centers. I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's literally the exact same thing. Y'all are even using yeah, the same phone updating that, system as Sprint did. That's why there are things online to inform people that you should talk about your wages with the other employees at your places of employment. You 100% should. One hundred percent. It's not illegal. Places will try to cover, pull the wool over your eyes, and they don't want employees talking about their wages with each other because they will try to get away with paying employees the least amount possible, even if it's nowhere near what other employees working there are making. Oh yeah, they do it all the time. Uh, well, negotiate your wage when you go to apply for it, a job too. Because number one, don't it's, accept their first offer. Because number one. It's not illegal for you to discuss it. And number two, number two, if they fire you for asking about it, you, you can, can sue, sue them. the shit out of them. Yes. Anyway. Anti-work. Man, shut the whole thing down. Let's see what's up. ICU nurse here. The two options we get to explain why we didn't receive a lunch break. There's no option for short-staffed or my patient was dying? Why did you miss your meal break? Manager request or voluntary? Yeah, because it's all black and white when it comes to nursing and working in the medical field in general. Nothing else can happen. There are no other reasons at all that someone would miss a break of any kind. Yeah, all I'll black and white, dude. That's manager a no requests, for me. Like for every single yeah. fucking time. Manager requests, like, like, and like, annoy the shit out of the manager, and basically the manager will have to be like, okay, we'll get the system fixed and add in like, like a definite reason why. Mm -hmm. Hey, you'd like the day off? Yes, please. So you want the day off? Let's take a look at what you're asking for. No, there are 365 days per year available to work. There are 52 weeks per year in which you already have two day off per week, leaving 261 days available for work. Since you spend 16 hours each day away from work, you've used up 170 days, leaving only 91 days available. What? You spend 30 yeah, minutes each day on a coffee. That's not how that works. That's no, bad math. that is shitty math. That, that makes no sense. Break. That accounts for 23 days a year, leaving only 68 days available. With one lunch period each day, you've already used up another 46 days, only leaving 22 days. You normally spend two days per year on sick leave. This leaves you with 20 days available for work. Your math We're is fucking stupid. So you're That's not how that works. Down to 15 days. We generously give you 14 days vacation per year. My available only... working time is down to 15 days. Fucking bullshit. You were at work a hell of a lot more than 15 days out of every year. More like okay. every fucking day right. besides two All days right. in each let's, week. Let's do the average on this. So, 365 days a year times 24. So, 
That is. This has to be a joke. That's eight thousand seven hundred and sixty hours. That's. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let me make sure my math's around that. Three sixty-five times twenty-four. Yeah, eight thousand seven hundred sixty hours for you to work throughout the year. So, say you work a forty-hour-a-day job. So forty times fifty-two equals two thousand eighty. Let's divide that by twenty-four. Honestly, the whole thing it just yeah it comes out to eighty-six. Like eighty-six days worth of work, but that's the but that does not account for the fact that oh gee, you sleep eight hours out of the day, which is physically mandatory to be a human being. And then not only that, but the eight hours that you are away from work, you have to you have to fit you know fit in all the other shit that you have to do around your house and with your family and with everything else that you got going on in your everyday life. And look. All I'm going to say is, am I not saying that there are lazy people out there? There are lazy people out there. There's people out there who say they suffer from time blindness, a.k.a. they they feel like they don't have to listen to the clock on the wall or what the time actually is, and, that's, and that gives them an excuse to why they're late to work all the time. It's like, no. Like, if you're going to work a job, show up on time. That's all I got to say. But... Employers pulling this shit right here, basically saying, well, technically, you only work 90 days out of the year. Fuck off. Well, after seeing the last uh, paragraph where there's like, you only have one day available for work, and I'll be darned if you're going to take that off. I'm like, well, that has to be a fucking joke thing then, at that point. It has to be. I was like, either that like or there's like a manager for- somewhere that is just batshit insane that came up with this shit. <laughs> like, yeah. It does not have any fucking concept of how reality actually functions. That's not accurate at all. Hey, sorry. My eyes are itching. That's okay. Work and I'll be darned if you're gonna take that day off. I don't know where any of these numbers are coming from, aside from there being 365 days a year and 52 weeks in a year. Okay, I don't know what you mean by 261 days available for work. Your math is really strange, and st- that's assuming that you take off two days per week because there's a lot of people now who don't take two days off per week. Mm-hmm. Stupid on like... purpose, so you can actually wipe my ass. How about that? You know, <laughs> I mean, come on, how stupid can you be? We know what the you're best math you can, can come up with is that there's only 261 days of the year to work, and if you ask off for five of them, there's still only 256 days. That's not enough days for you to be here out of the year. Mm. So you could maybe subtract the holidays and stuff, but you're still going to have, like, overall, like, a bad argument, like, against someone asking for an extra day or three off throughout the year, you know? Yeah. Do watching The Incredibles and saw this when Bob gets called into his boss's office. No wonder he threw him through 15 walls. Oh, wait, what is this? Hold on a second here. I can't, I can't, is this a, I'm trying to read it. One second. Yeah, I can't, I can't make out what, am I supposed to be trying to read it? Is it like a, a letter of you're fired or so? I don't know, dude. Oh, know, here dude. we go. Oh. Thank you. I don't know why I didn't assume that someone was going to translate it for me. Okay. <clears throat> to employee from Gilbert Q. Due to financial uh. cutbacks, she'll now be expected to self-expense all office supplies, including but not limited to pencils, erasers, pens, paper, stationery, folders, staples, paper clips, brads. I know what the brads are. You know what brads are? Yeah, those little uh, metal things that you like fold down. Yeah. Hold stuff together. Yeah. Also, it's a little bit of a pun to the director of the film, Brad Bird. (laughs) And photocopies. All parking will now be metered by the hour. Electricity consumption and all telephone charges will be deducted from your paycheck. The board of directors at InsuraCare wishes to thank you. Electricity consumption. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, anywhere that tries to do that to you, quit immediately. Yes. You're not going to get paid shit. <laughs> For your selfless sacrifice, and then, no, man, they really went above and beyond to make this the worst company on earth. Well, it's insure, it's an insurance company. 
Hell, Brad Bird has been saying this for years. Insurance companies basically have a mafia over most industries out there. Like, whether that be the medical industry, whether that be the service industry, like, insurance companies basically just do whatever the hell they want and, you know, bump up premiums and all this and all that. Simply because, like, if someone is paying you money for insurance, it is your job as the insurance company to to fulfill the end of the bargain whenever something bad happens. And that's the thing with uh, with Mr. Incredible was that he knew how to get around a lot of it, and he actually recommended to that old woman. It's just like I definitely cannot recommend that you fill out a form this that and this that and blah 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 blah, and and make also, it out to normal Wilcox. Norma Wilcox. I also like the whole part, like, due to financial cutbacks, like, you would think implying that the company is, like, not doing very well and needs to make cutbacks to get by. And then down at the end, insurance care has recorded its highest profits in years. <laughs> it's just like, uh, there are real companies that have actually done this kind of shit recently. Yes. There are literally companies that have laid off employees recently and then recorded their highest profits they've ever had for the year. It's like WWE. It's like fucking scum of the earth, dude. Like, holy shit. Yeah. Your company, uh, I get it. You invested a lot in the company and therefore, you know, you are owed back for your investment. But, dude, your employees are what make the cogs turn. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. It's just like I kept reading, hearing about bonuses back in the day. It's like, wait, your bosses gave used to give you bonuses back in the day? Because I read about that. I was just like, it's like, uh, for instance, Christmas Vacation. Christmas Vacation, Clark was desperately waiting on that Christmas bonus for his, uh, for his, biz you know, for his business dealings. And he didn't get it. And he went fucking nuts. And the, the, think of a job. Have you ever worked a job where they have ever given you a Christmas bonus? Oh. <laughs> You're the only one that ever has. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> One time, <laughs> just one job, just your your job that you give me, because <laughs> you did give me a bonus for Christmas one year. Oh uh, yeah. So, but yeah, imagine? other than that, no, I've not. <laughs> I can't think of any either. Having to foot the electric bill and telephone bill and pay for parking for your goddamn employer? Oh, just imagine how cartoonishly evil that would be. Yep. Now, we know that this exists, I wonder which dingleberry at Comcast or another giant, Comcast being evil, of course, I wonder, I wonder how long it is before they do that to their employees. Amazon. Maximum eight hours a week. Amendment Amazon's like the cost to run the air conditioner for your particular warehouse will come out of everyone's paychecks at the end of every week. No. Or the end of every pay period. And then on top of that, they will let the air conditioner in the office go out and still take the air conditioner fee out of their paychecks. Remote working in Ohio. That would, you know, Corporations are not cool, man. Yeah. It's from working remotely. Okay. Let's see. The amendment is inside of the state's $94 what? Excuse me? I grew up poor in the 80s. It beats 2023. My dad worked at a pizza place and my mom didn't. He was the manager or the assistant manager. He made and sometimes delivered pizzas. He bought a very cheap house, which today would cost $350,000. Had three children, two cars. We were always fed. Went to the movies. Had Nintendo. This might not sound poor, but all of my clothes were secondhand. The cars were older and some people at school let me know that I was poor. We never went on vacations. We lived in the bad part of town, but 80s poor was so much better than today. I'm old poor and I know poor and the way people have to live today is horrific. I've never seen so many unhoused people in my life. The price gouging for cars, rent and real estate is disgusting. Capitalism is a monster that is actively making our lives more difficult. Corporatism. Mm -hmm. you, got, you got to fix that. It's capitalism and the right of people to pursue, you know, personal profits due to their skills and trades and everything like that. That's true capitalism. What we have right now is corporatism. Basically, everything is gathered at the top and no one's giving up anything. And there's and, no cap. And there is no, yeah. Yeah. 
That is correct. Uh, sure, there might be some benefits here and there. Maybe I don't know. Maybe Not to that's mention, just there's me. nothing to regulate the people that have the uncapped income up at the top from bribing the shadow of the government to make sure everything stays that way. Yes. That's what corporatism is. And also... It's that's, not the intention of capitalism. No, it isn't. And also, make lobbying illegal, term limits on your politicians, and all that fun stuff. You know, the stuff I've been advocating for for years, but... Mm -hmm. mm huffing on some copium or something like that dude but yeah price gouging for everything msrp no actually we're gonna triple the price of that car because we think that's what it's worth it's awful unions are why there are fire exits at your work and why the doors aren't padlocked during work hours that's true the amount of people that have died in factory fires because they were locked in mm. <laughs> oh man even if it was one guy how could you not understand that, that that's one far up. Yeah, once again, unions, I, I like unions. I like workers' unions whenever they they do what's necessary. I've always advocated for if the job itself wants a, you know, if like the business itself, the people who work for this business want the union, then let them unionize. You see, that's always been my thing. It's like I look at people say, well, Tesla doesn't have a union. It's like, yeah, and it's because... The majority of the people who work there don't want to unionize. They're happy with the wages that they're getting. And honestly, I would also say that Walmart Walmart has been fighting against unionizing their workers and everything. And what they've resorted to is actually like a lot worse than what a lot of other companies have done. It's It's terrifying, dude. Far, 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 far too many. Out of the frying pan, into the fire. I graduated from college eight years ago. I was 28. I refused to go into debt for college, so I joined the military. I kept my grades up, and they took care of me. Hashtag cancel student debt is a slap in the face to many like me. Imagine thinking, I had to enter into a situation where I potentially would have died, or maybe would have had to kill others so that I wouldn't go into crippling debt just for an education, is a good argument to maintain that system. Also, imagine Imagine thinking that other people have to suffer like you because it makes you feel better about what you had to go through. I understand that what you had to go through was crappy. No one should be forced to join a military complex at all. No one should be forced to do that or feel like they're forced to do that. Yeah, too bad to because that's what's education. exactly about to happen here soon if World War Three starts like Joe Biden's fucking wanting it to. Yeah, not only that, but also... I have something to so ask we're about. All the, gonna be forced to I, do. I was going to ask about the cancellation of student debts. Um, I already paid all my student debts back. Can I get my money back then, if that's the case? Uh, that can can I get my money back? N no, you you you're telling me to fuck off. Oh, okay, all right. Typical. And it's even worse when they get you so good that you yeah, think they other... told all of us to fuck off, even the ones who hadn't already paid them off. Oh, and here's another thing, too. A lot of people don't know this, but you know which bank is giving out all the student loan debts and has been since 2008, since every bank in the United States has declared student loans to be a not worthy risk? Oh. You know which banks are giving them out? Oh. Federal institutions. Mm -hmm. Because it means you're in debt to the federal government, not a bank. You see, it may, like, it, you have to look at, you have to look at everything that it is. For instance, Chad thought he was working for the federal government whenever he was working for the army, but do you know who he got his, uh, who he got his, uh, <clears throat> first check from? Yeah, his bonus check for signing up? Came from Chase Bank. See, you never know where the money's coming from until you actually look, and that's what it is with student debt. I refused to go into student debt to the point where, I, like me, I worked my ass off at a at like a job, trying to like cancel out as much of my student debt as possible and paid for most of my classes with that. But I still had to go into debt about ten to fifteen thousand dollars. And it took me a while to pay it off, but I eventually did. And 
I would say for me... See, my parents wouldn't allow me to take time to try to work to save any money before they forced me to go to college. They were like, nope, you have to go right away and you have to take out student loans to pay for it. So I didn't have a choice. Oh, boy. I was told I had to. And then... My dad my dad told me, like, do everything you can to avoid student loans. Well, my dad co-signed on my initial student loans, which came from a credit union. So... In order for him to retire, that student loan had to be paid for. And since I was not able to make any fucking progress on it whatsoever, he paid for it for me. And I feel like that was fair anyway, since mm. it was my parents that told me I had to take it out, you know? It wasn't my yeah. like, intent to ever take out a student loan and have to go into debt. Uh, but there was still a $700 $7,500 loan that I had to take from the federal government because my grades dropped slightly too low to be able to borrow anymore from the credit union. So in order to stay for the extra time that I did, I have 7500 that I owe the federal government, and I still owe them that to this day. Uh, yeah, there it is. Fed loan. That's the main... That's the main, like, federal... Uh, that's the main federal, like, student, like, student loan. Mm-hmm. Like, they gave our loans right to somebody there. else now. Fed loan, there's another one. Yeah, or my, or my yeah, Fed so loan. Instead of going through Fed loan, we have to pay them back through some new fucking place now. Like, starting whenever they, uh, the payback period starts in September. Jesus. Which I'm kind of like, I think it's fucked up that people can just sell your debt to other people, too. Yeah, that's something that's pretty bullshit. Mm -hmm. People should be required to suffer at least as much as you did, okay? That's the big problem I have with previous generations and their outlook on the world. They want you to suffer like they did, or they think you're an entitled little (laughs) bitch. And it's ridiculous, and we need to shut that (laughs) shit down. Or go homemade. You will still not afford it, but at least you're now a ha- Oh, now houseless in peace. Okay. (laughs) Remember, friend, a $5 iced latte a day is 25 bucks a week, 100 bucks a month, 1,200 a year. After 10 years, that's $12,000, which is still nowhere near enough to put a down payment on a house. So enjoy your espresso in peace. Yeah. I look at numbers like this and realize that being a self-employed person without a 401k or a company that's actually able to provide like a match or anything like that, when I turn 62, I'm probably gonna have like $50,000 to my name, which means I'll have maybe a good year of living before I die or have to go back to work. It's gonna be something crazy. Nearly one in five workers are allowed quitting at their jobs, a new Gallup poll says, and it's way more extreme than quiet quitting. <laughs> Damn straight I'm loud quitting. I'm going to be like that guy that hired like a high school marching band or a college marching band to show up and just blast his boss's face off when he handed in his letter of resignation. We need more of that. If you're mistreated, give it back. Not every job should have a living wage. That's yeah, I wouldn't go around person. smashing your computer monitors and shit, though. Cause... Yeah, it's a bit... That's a bit much, but... If you're going to be quitting your job, you don't want to risk them... Uh making you pay for your shit by filing vandalism charges against you. Also, I can already tell this one's this one's absolutely gonna I've always wished I was at a place whenever like somebody decided they were done so I could hear like their announcement over the speakers like attention shoppers this place is a fucking joke and I'm leaving right now and I uh, hope you'll have a good day and this company can go fuck itself. Bye. <laughs> Fair, <like> that. Yeah. <laughs> Society, it's not healthy for someone making ice cream cones at Dairy Queen to make enough money to live off of. You want a society that actually can't live off these jobs. So how are those working those jobs meant to live? And more importantly, how will I get ice cream at Dairy Queen when all of the people working for them died? I can't believe how short-sightedly stupid that tweet is. Yeah, that's... Once again, the cost of living is what needs to come down in this country. Because I've said it before and I'll say it again, fifteen hundred dollars a month—that's that should be enough for someone to be able to afford an apartment. Uh, that you know, afford an apartment, afford uh, you know, well, you know, renting the apartment, afford you know, electricity, afford internet, afford the phone bill, and afford like uh, you know, a car payment. Or you know, if you got a beater car, you know, you don't have a car payment. And that, 
and and that would give you extra money left over to save. Fifteen hundred dollars a month, I think, should be enough to live off of. But now, fifteen hundred dollars a month, you can't do that, and it's because inflation. Once again, inflation, a rising tide raises all ships, and once again, property. You know, whenever property values go up, property taxes go up, and there's not really much you can do about that. And I hate that. Like, uh, just if they suddenly like raise the minimum wage to a living wage for everyone, then it wouldn't be a living wage anymore. And then not only that, but inflation would immediately make that a non-living wage. Yeah, and then not only that, and but so everyone then, would be screwed. Yeah, and not only that, but Except also for those who already make well above whatever they raise it to. Yeah, and not only that, but like. Small independent stores are not going to be able to keep up with that, and and instead it's the only the big companies that'll be able to keep up with that, mm -hmm. in which that's what they want. In they which want us. You would just be fueling the corporatism even harder. Yeah, the truth is. Stop every... advocating for a raised wage and start advocating for the price of living to fall. Yeah, start advocating. Start marching to the federal buildings in Washington D.C. and demanding that they balance the budget. Because it's not the president that, de that determines what the budget is. It's Congress. Congress determines what the budget is. And every year since, I think, 2003, they've gone above budget. Like, they've gone above the spending budget. There needs to be a thing in place that basically says, no, you are not allowed to spend above this budget. You are not allowed to spend, you know, send, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to overseas bullshit that doesn't benefit the American people. Take care of the American people. That's how it should be. Because we have over 100,000 homeless on the streets in Los Angeles. 100,000 people that need to be taken care of. That need the care to be given to them by the state. And the only way it's going to happen is if you balance the budget and you find the money for them to be able to to be like taken off the streets and be put in places that actually give a shit and can help them. God. Anywho, sorry. Not every job should have a living wage. Jobs that you demand. The fact that you mentioned making ice cream cones at Dairy Queen means you're probably a frequenter of Dairy Queen, whether it's you and the kids or maybe just you. There's nothing wrong with going to Dairy Queen on your own on a regular basis. I've done it before, okay? But a job, again, that you necessitate exists. And I'm not, I'm just talking like you want ice cream. Therefore, you are necessitating that someone make you that ice cream. And they do. And you really want to look in the faces of these people and tell them they don't deserve to live, they have to work 40 other jobs, or they simply just need to become a CEO. Lift yourself up by those bootstraps, baby. How about that? It costs around $70 to produce a year's supply of insulin. Yet, the average annual cost of insulin went from $2,864 in 2012 to $5,705 in 2016 to $12,000 in 2022. Patents on medical equipment are bullshit. Yep. Look, I understand that the research that goes in, <clears throat> that goes into some drugs out there, you know, companies need to make their money back and return on investment, but this is nonsense. This is absolute bullshit. Any, and this is why I look at costplusdrugs.com. It's like JT. JT, when he was on his like uh, his anti-seizure medication, it used to cost him, I think it was, what, $400 a month for his medication. And, and he had to quit it. He had to quit it, and this puts him at higher risk of having, a, of having seizures. Think about that. You have to quit a medication because of your risk, uh, uh, because the risk of you having seizures is, you know, it... You're more you're more equipped to hand, like, handle the risk of having a random seizure and and not take your medicine than have to be able to pay the three to four hundred dollars a month for the medicine. It mm. and you know what the crazy thing is? Plus, where else have we seen that twelve thousand dollars before in this video? 
It was oh. going to take you 10 years to save up the money for one year of insulin by not drinking $5 coffee. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, so. It is absurd. Yes, it is absurd. And, but the, here's the thing. <clears throat> I took JT to costplusdrugs.com and we looked up his, uh, his stuff now, his, uh, his, uh, medicine, you know, his anti-seizure medication on there. It only costs, it only costs like 40 bucks now for a month's supply because the patent ran out on it. The patent ran out on it and now it's actually affordable. Makes me curious. Oh, yeah. See, that's the thing. Costplusdrugs.com is a nifty little life hack that I think everyone out there can benefit from. And I think that... I think people need to take more advantage of it. Oh, what's up? Study inhaler manufacturers use patents exclusivity to shut out generic competition. Yep. And by shutting out generic competition, oh, the prices stay up. And... Yeah, it, it, it's ridiculous. Hold on. Costplusdrugs.com. There it is. Yeah. The normal retail prices for a lot of these drugs, like uh, Zigan, or Zytiga. Zytiga costs over $1,000 retail. They're offering it on here for $33. Uh, Gleevi, uh, Gleevic is the normal cost is around $2,500. They're offering it for $11 on here. Canasa, same thing. Oh my gosh. This is... Do me a favor real quick. Look up Dulera on there. Dulera? Okay, hold on. Dulera, D-U-L... Let's see. I wonder, uh, Dulera, Dulera patent. What are you doing, Mr. Key? Ah, here we go. Dulera availability. Mr. Key. Mr. Key, quit. <laughs> Y'all seeing this? He can't help himself. He's... He's trying to turn off the TV with the remote. Stop it. He reached straight for the power button. Yes, he did. <laughs> so, is there a generic version of Dulera? No, it has not been. There is no uh, therapeutic equivalent version in, of Dulera available in the United States. And, yeah. Pediatric exclusivity. The FDA, upon approval of the drug, can run concurrently with a patent or not. An NDA applicant, so... Apparently, uh, the pedi finally expired in February of this year. Yes, pediatric exclusivity so there could be one at some point. Yes. Hold on, wait a second. New pat a uh, new patent expiration. Wait, when is it? Uh... Okay, drug patent watch. Huh. So yeah, Organa, uh, Organon LLC. Let's see. Hold on. Let me. Ah. So these are the fuckers that are holding it up. They're the ones that own the patent on it and everything. I think the legal limit of a patent should be four or five years. That's it. For four to five years. For medicine. Actually. Yeah, exactly. Make your money back in those four or five years, but then after that, it's... it's Because that's the thing. This is what stifles the market. This is what makes the market value of these things go through the roof it's because there's no competition when there's no competition the prices go nowhere but up 
Whenever there's competition, prices go down. That's how it needs to be. That I am an advocate for the free market. And right now, this is not the free market. This is corporatism. This is the federal government literally giving the power to these companies to hold people's like lives for grant. They, you know, to hold ho hold their lives hostage. Thank you. Yeah. It it blows me away that that is the that that's the reality that we live in. That's a 17,000% markup. That isn't inflation. It isn't supply chain issues. It's 100% corporate greed. Yeah, it is. I found a software error at a company I work for that's costing them about $18 million a year. But I haven't told them that because they told me no when I asked for a raise. <laughs> it's <laughs> not like the raise would be very much, nice. even if you did tell them and you saved them that nearly 20 million bucks a year. All they would do on a good day, for real, is maybe give you like uh, an 11 percent raise or something which no if a single guy saved your company 20 million dollars a year going forward that's garbage i'd literally tell them i actually you know what i would do i would literally be like go to the shareholders and be like hey i found an error that made these that saved these guys 18 million dollars a year and thus made like would have made and thus would have made you all more profits but they told me to go fuck myself whenever I asked for a raise about it. And thus, you know, I, I, you shouldn't be looking to them who saved you money. Look to me. I actually saved you money. And I'd go public with a news, news story and everything. Because imagine, like, dude, the amount of... I, I know Charlie would probably make a video about it. It's like, these dingleberries here fired this guy because he asked for a raise. Now, keep in mind, I want you to understand that asking for a raise is something that every human being does. Hell, I asked my dad for a raise on my allowance, and he told me, No, son. No, I cannot afford to give you a raise. <laughs> but, Dad, I saved you $20 million. I think even my dad, the curmudgeon that he is, would be like, You know, son, I'm going to cut you in on the family business. Here's 5% <laughs> shares of the business, of the family business of making little umbrella straws called called MacGuffins. Yeah, it, I guarantee you, dude, like that, that shit right there is just mm, irritating. I'm talking, you're now paying me 200 grand a year. How about that? Because I'm still saving you $17 million a year. At least, at least, man. Applying for at tech least. support jobs, saw this, immediately thought of this sub. Okay, 16 to $20 an hour. Okay, must have obtained an associate's degree in the following areas, computer science or information systems. Okay, Fair uh, enough. an associate's degree, isn't that two years? Must be able to lift up to 50 pounds. All uh -huh. right, must be available to work <coughs> rotating shifts, overtime, off hours holidays weekends and be on call 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year oh and a driver's Ooh, license no. okay so here so here's what i will uh here's what i'll say this is a uh, 16 to 20 dollars an hour remember we said cost of living in the united states needs to be at minimum fifteen thousand dollars for rent and all the all the stuff so at the low end of that, sixteen dollars an hour times forty. Forty hours a week times four. Yeah, that's twenty five hundred dollars. That's that is a decent wage to live you know, decent wage to live off of in my ideal world where, you know, fifteen hundred a month is enough to live off of. Now Cut into, you know, cut into like the twenty dollars an hour. So twenty times forty times four, yeah, thirty-two hundred. That's pretty good. Thirty-two hundred dollars a month working that. That stuff right there, I, the, you know, everything is good up until this right here. Must be available. Must be available to work rotating shifts, overtime, off hours, holidays, weekends. You see, this isn't the most terrible thing. But it still sucks because it just that essentially means you don't get to enjoy your life at all because you could be called into work at any given time. Exactly. It, if they really would just nice. take this away and just be like, during the out during these hours here, you are expected to be called in, but you must work at least forty hours a week, or must work at least work thirty 
to 35 hours a week. That's an immediate no for me because I'm going to be like, I literally can't even take this job because I know the way I sleep. Like, if they try to call me and I'm asleep... You're fucked. I'm fired. Yeah. Because I ain't fucking waking up to answer my phone. I don't hear my phone when I sleep. I don't really that much either. Like, you want to know what my fucking alarm sound is to wake me up in the goddamn morning? It's the fucking... It's fucking loud as hell. Yes, it is. I've heard it. Because, like, that's the only kind of shit that will wake me up. Like, I'd have to set that shit for my call sound, I guess, but, like, I still don't think it would wake me up if I've only been asleep for three hours because I'll sleep through a fucking hurricane. Yeah. I can advocate to that. He he basically, like, slept through, like, absolute chaos I happening. I go to a different plane of existence during my first at least yeah, three to he, four hours of sleep. He, he goes to the shadow realm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. I like that they slot that in in the middle there. I'm just going to skip over that and go to driver's license. No. No. Uh-uh. <clears throat> that's not how it works. You're not going to pay me 16 measly-ass dollars an hour to be on call forever. No. You know what? How about this? I'll take the job. I just won't have a phone because that's not part of the requirement, is it? I don't see a bullet <laughs> that's true. for having a working phone. Oopsie poopsie. <laughs> oh, no. Everyone in a leadership role should read this. Leadership tax tactics and techniques. Let's see. Leadership versus management. The difference between the two. We refer to leaders as leaders and acknowledge that they have various management responsibilities. You lead people. You manage things. Wow. So, a manager, like, okay, that, mm, that, that is a very poor choice of words. That, that is horrible wording of that. Because you make it sound like, oh, the people who work under me aren't people. They're things. Because I'm a manager. That's why they're saying here that since they look at it that way, they don't call them managers. They refer to leaders as leaders. And acknowledge that they have management responsibilities, such as managing assets, resources, systems, operations, projects. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are not machines, systems, or projects. Well, there are a lot of giant corporations that could absolutely use this advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the Marine Corps. Yeah, this is the Marine Corps book, uh, like, like code book, like that. Like that's the symbol of the Marine Corps. I know that. I know that symbol. I'm just kidding. They literally know about this stuff. They know. They're not ignorant. They just don't care. See, crazy thing. They are run by pretty smart people. They know exactly how they can keep you down, okay? All while making you kind of feel like a person. But yeah, no, they, they call people managers for a reason. You are a thing to them. They don't give a <clears throat> shit about you. And no, I'm not talking about your low, your little low-level manager that you're probably buddies with or something like that. I'm talking about the guys that run the <clears throat> shit. You know there is there's that fine line. Jump above it, and we're in a pretty rough spot. Breaking. McDonald's workers in Oakland have walked off the job on strike. After our store was transferred to a new franchisee, our recruit paid sick leave was zeroed out. We weren't compensated or told. Oh, no. The worker was no. relying on the paid leave for a hernia surgery. That yeah, sounds I remember like it should be extremely illegal. That, that, that should be 100% illegal. And all these workers need to sue the shit. <laughs> <clears throat> out of McDonald's over that. As a matter of fact, I can tell you there is like there's probably a civic like a civic a civil servant lawyer out there who would be more than happy to take this job on because the, like McDonald's McDonald's is one of the kings of literally throwing money at the problem to make it go away. They're one of the kings of it. And they will literally do that. I guarantee you they will not only compensate you for all of your sick leave that was zeroed out, but they will give you they will give you that much more and then some. And basically like they'll pay for like enough they'll pay enough to where that guy's hernia surgery won't even be a factor anymore. Like, and, and honestly, I've seen it. I've seen like people who were gonna like th even threatened to bring a lawsuit against McDonald's and if it held any water, their legal team would just be like uh, just uh, give them 300% uh, of what they're asking for. 300% beats having to pay 200, like, beats having to pay 2,000% if they go to court. Mm -hmm. That's also before the court costs and everything like that, sir. So uh, I'd take the deal. 
And yeah, and that's just how it would be. Working for a UPS store who uh, was actually sold in the middle of me working there. The original owner used to give you raises every six months. It wasn't much. It was like 50 cents or something like that, just to kind of stay ahead of that slow creep. You know what I'm saying? Again, not much. I started at eight bucks an hour. Worked for the UPS store for like five years, and by the time I left, I was making 11. Woo! But she was nice. The new guy that took it over, though. Oh, yeah. He got rid of that and actually walked back any of the money I made up until Colorado forced him to pay more. I worked open to close six days a goddamn week. Oh, it was something. Let me tell you. Screw that sh**. Okay, the worst part is I was pretty good at the job and didn't actually hate it. A bad manager can take a good staff and destroy it, causing the best employees to flee and the remainder to lose all motivation. When you get your leaders into those positions, you really got to make sure that they're going to be a good fit. I mean, get, everybody's got to have a probationary period, right? Can yes. you handle the heat and treat people like people? That's what matters. How does this sub feel about remote work? LOL, my husband quit his job after being forced back into the office in 2021. He got a new job that was full remote, became the lead of their new product within three months, and is the most liked person at the company. And built our bike shed and two new decks during his lunch hours. Everyone I know with remote jobs have declined both mentally and physically. F*** you. Don't just lie. Don't just make s*** up. I mean Some remote jobs, I can. there are people out there who I've heard say that their remote job is very emotionally draining because they don't, because it's not because the job itself is draining on them, it's the fact that a lot of our, a lot of the people that I know are introverts and don't really go out much mm -hmm. and i think that's a that's a problem that you know you need to work on it's like dude you're working a job from home where you can literally sit at home and in between your uh in between like your you taking calls or working on spreadsheets and stuff like that you can literally pick up the switch and just like play tears of the kingdom and and honestly it, it it's good to get out and actually be you know be involved and like like with other people and like talk with other people and hang out with other people because you know mentally that like, uh, even if you're an introvert even if you're a hardcore introvert it's good to have some people in your life that you can at least talk to I mean hell you're a fairly introverted person Andrew and chance are very introverted people but yet Y'all have each other, and y'all still talk, and y'all still make plans that don't often come out, uh, come to fruition. Here recently. They go to the casino the last time Jeff was in town, though. That's true. That is true. <clears throat> you know what? But, uh, Even yeah, if that like I was going to say, uh, I did decline mentally and physically during COVID, but I think the mentally part was due to COVID, not due to not due having to... a job working pretty much at my place of living. It was just the anxiety of like, I don't like the fact there's a disease out here killing people that have things like I have, like asthma, you know? Yeah, the people who are at risk. Yeah, that's that wasn't very cool to be thinking about all the fucking time. And no. my mental state has gone <clears throat> way up without quitting working from home. Like, since then, due to the fact that it's not fucking brought up on a daily basis anymore, and I don't feel like I'm as likely to get it anymore, you know? And that, since I've had vaccinations, that I feel a little safer, too. Yeah, so, true. It's like, I don't give a fuck if you think that I'm stupid for getting the vaccination, man. It helped my mental health, and that's what matters is true that's a hell of a minority right there i've never met anybody who works remotely who is significantly worse off he meets his co-worker who lives in our neighborhood for lunch we go for bike rides and he runs several times a week midday i also do remote contract work so we can easily switch back and forth with our kids care tasks based on who has a meeting or time sensitive work stuff he can also take 10 minute naps when something is processing and he needs to wait and can wear his sweatpants if he wants to this anti-remote propaganda is so silly it is. Mm -hmm. I used to have regular day jobs for days, dude. And you know what? Ever since I started working here at MK, it's been the greatest experience of my life. Let me tell you, you guys are fantastic. I'm glad you accepted me. Sorry to get a little mushy here. All of you are f great. Working with these people has been amazing. I get to live a portion of my dream, okay? It's fantastic. And I want everybody else out there, regardless of their job, if it's possible, to be able to do the 
the same thing, okay? Sure, there are plenty of things that you can't do remotely, and I get it. There's also plenty of people like me who do not mind going somewhere to work. However, you should always have the choice if it's possible. If it is possible. <coughs> and I used to work at Comcast as well. I think I've talked about it here before maybe one billion times the last three or so years. Yeah. <laughs> that job is 100% possible to do from home. But you want to know what? I think they let like four goddamn people do that because they, I don't know, sued or something? It's ridiculous. Save yourselves billions of dollars in rent, Comcast. Let people do it from their homes if they want. A Black Mirror episode in which you're forced to rent your labor to a predatory ownership class who then grant you tokens that you trade for basic necessities, including food and shelter. Mm. You mean your real life? <laughs> yeah, it... Yeah, you mean like the coal towns? Basically, you get tokens, meaning, you know, ta like, like coal town dollars, not, not actual currency, but you're only allowed to buy stuff at the general store in town, which is owned by the coal company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my ancestors fought against that shit. Fuck that noise. How the actual hell is this allowed? Indentured servitude. Nurses hit with hefty debt when trying to leave hospitals. Requiring nurses to repay for training programs has become increasingly common, with some hospitals sending $15,000 bills. What the uh, fuck? At that point, you know what I would do? I would literally shit, I would literally, like, hit the return address, and I would shit into a box. And mail it back. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <sighs> All in all, we're left here with, with this. We, we left off on this, where hospitals are trying to make nurses repay their training programs. Which, no. Under con like, like, underemployment contract, unless it is specifically stated in the employment contract that you sign, you do not have to repay those bills. So anytime... Someone wants to bring that up. It's like, well, we spend fifteen thousand dollars training you every time. It's like, I okay. really doubt that. I, d I doubt that too. It's like, what what are you spending fifteen thousand dollars in training for? It's not like you're employing people to teach me shit. No, you just sit me in a room and play videos from like the nineteen like the nineteen nineties. Same like the same shit. Anywho, let's get back into this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, again, I'm sorry I don't like bringing Comcast out all the time, but I did go through three months of training before being thrown onto the floor like I was a dead wet rat, all right? They talk about and they flaunt it at you all the time, at least they used to, that the average person costs $18,000 to train because they also pay you more when you're trained. I was getting eighteen thirty an hour or so. And then once I was actually working, I went down to 12 and then had to work off of commission. Real cool, guys. Give someone a taste of actual hourly real money and then take it away and make them sell phones and shit. <laughs> okay. But yeah, they really throw that in your face to guilt trip you. There should be no way that they are allowed to send you bills for that, all right? Hiring people and training them, it's the name of the goddamn game. They don't get to go, well, d d w well, actually, I'm a minor, and all my requests for my family vacation got denied. What should I do? Okay, so you're a minor. Let's take a look. They denied multiple requests. First request came within one month's notice for only four days off. I see they all got denied, but I don't really know what they expect me to do. I'm a cashier, and it's my whole extended family vacation that's already been paid for. Okay, edit. I was never planning on missing the vacation, of course. Screw them. Didn't really know if I should just take it and get fired, but it looks like that's probably the case. <laughs> Ugh, excuse yeah. me. Okay, yeah, for real, though. You are a minor working as a cashier, okay? Just think about it this way. They really just said, tell your managers, dude, my family is leaving town. They cannot leave me here to work with you. Therefore, I'm going to be gone on these days. If that's a problem, fire him. Sucks. <laughs> really, especially if you're, I don't know, I would assume 16, 17, you know, whether you're working at Target, Safeway, I don't know. But if it's one of your first jobs, what, what do they think you're going to be working there forever? You don't have like some permanent record or some crap. You don't need to list your first cashier job or something as a reference. Screw it. Quit. The way they treat us workers, we don't need to worry about them. Okay, they'll be all right and you will be better off for it. Let them know you're no longer requesting time off. You are informing them you will not be there those days. Mm -hmm. I agree. If they
they fire you, so be it. Go get another cashier job because you're young and can work the rest of your life. But a family vacation is a once in a lifetime event. Exactly. There will always, even with the robots, be plenty of cashier jobs or uh, things like that that need doing that we could all jump into. You'll be all right. <coughs> it's totally fine. Don't let them guilt trip you into not living parts of your youth, okay? Don't let them force you to waste it. I think we're asking for too little. Four hours for work, eight hours for rest, 12 hours for what we will. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ever play Bioshock Infinite when you get to that specific level in the game where you're at the Fink Manufacturing Company, everyone's begging for jobs, and there's a giant clock that keeps track of sleep and leisure and work, and the leisure portion is like the smallest chunk of the clock? An experimental submarine with... Yeah, that's... Mm. You know, there was a time, back I think it was like the 1950s, 1960s, that <clears throat> due to the common trend of, uh, of like jobs and how much people were getting paid and cost of living back then, that they said that the, out of all households, only one person would have to work a job. And that one person working that regular average job will basically make in 20 hours 20 hours a week of working would make enough to where their family could have like pay they could pay for the house they could pay they could pay for like house payment pay for the car pay for all the amenities and everything that you need so much for that yeah we didn't get that with some of the richest people in the world disappears. Oh no, anyway, for sake, yeah. there's at least one person that doesn't deserve being mocked and treated like shit here in this case. Mm. Fuck the bourgeois. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <gasps> I've been playing Disco Elysium lately. Communism, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Damn. Like, Disco Elysium was written by communists, but I don't take that part of it 100% seriously, obviously. Eh. Also, I see a really good music video out there. Yeah. Uh. Corpse Aviator. Yes. Uh, in terms of, like, some of my favorite films are written by communists, but at the same time, it's like, I go to them because they tell entertaining stories, not because of their, like, financial political leanings. Well, see, I agree, like, with the basic ideology of what they're talking about. Mm hmm But I also realize that that is pretty much fantasy, and that's not achievable. Yes. <laughs> well, it is fantasy, and that's, once again, it's like... Does that suck? Yes, absolutely. Well, yeah. Can I do anything to make it not suck? Not really, no. Here's the thing. If you do. want true equity in this world, if you want it to where everyone gets exactly the same, everyone, you know, there's... You know, just for existing, you're paid you're paid like a living wage from like the collective taxation of everybody. The only way that is ever going to be perfect and no one takes any shortcuts or no one gets any kickbacks upon kickbacks for like snitching to the government or anything like that is if everything's controlled by artificial intelligence. Literally, that is it. Because that's if we can even trust the artificial intelligence. And that's the other thing too. That's if we can trust it, which... Terminator says it's unlikely. Yeah, very <laughs> unlikely. And I hate that. I hate that... Plus, how are we to trust people who uh, are going to the artificial intelligence to be honest about what <clears throat> the artificial intelligence says that we should do? Mm. Well, my whole thing with artificial intelligence is that's, you know, that's one thing. But in terms of... You know, real world stuff. I look at all the places where where communism has, and where the only place it truly works is whenever it is truly controlled. Like like the social wel welfare stuff is in control of the government, but yet the economic free. For instance, Denmark has a good system, and before anyone says Denmark, oh, that's a you know they practice democratic socialism. When it comes to certain social programs, yes. But whenever it comes to the economic freedom that people have in terms of job choice, in terms of uh, in terms of like uh, private businesses and stuff like that, they're more free than we are. 
It's because their government doesn't hold these stupid patent, like have patent laws and trademark laws and copyright laws that literally restrict small businesses from being able to compete and thus making com Therefore, making capitalism a capitalism actually works. Yes. But instead, it will, and also, the reason why their social welfare programs work is because, number one, they don't pay for a military over there. We're their military. And which is why I've always advocated for the fact that, you know, the U.S. government just needs to, like, okay, we're bringing all of our troops home, and all of our troops are going to work on homeland stuff. And we'll still have our embassies and shit like that, but we're not going to have as many soldiers over there. And in truth, we don't, like, y'all don't want us over there, so why should we stay? And then not only that, but hey, also, just so it'll be easier for you all to defend yourselves, here's high-grade weapons, M4s, uh, friggin' anti-aircraft, uh, you know, guns, uh, anti-missile uh, systems, tanks, helicopters, air, like, jet, like, jet planes, you know, it just all the stuff that they would need to defend themselves, and we'll sell it to them wholesale. Basically, that would eliminate several trillion dollars from the deficit alone, and not only that, but it would make it to where we're possibly not spending as much money overseas. Sounds good, right? Basically, we're, basically, we're bringing our soldiers home so that our soldiers can actually take care of the American people who are in this country. And we're basically not spending ridiculous amounts of money keeping all of them overseas. That, there's been equations that show, on average, that would save us about two to three trillion dollars every year. Like, think about that. Pretty sure the reason the government has them there in the first place, though, is to keep, like, basically in the pocket close to their interests, essentially. Yes, but here's what I'll say. If these countries don't want us there and are just going to complain, why are we still there? Because the government has interests there that they're trying to keep close to. I guess, but... I just think we should we should give them the choice. We should basically like put it to a vote. Be like, all right, do y'all still want us here, being your personal, being like your military defense? And if they say no, we don't want you here. It's like, okay, we're leaving. Thanks for having us. It's I mean, great to speculate about, but do you think the American government will ever do it? Highly unlikely. If the right person gets in office, that'll never happen. <laughs> Yeah, if I'm being definitely honest. definitely ain't been a Republican, and it definitely ain't been a Democrat so far. So, Well, the last person who tried to do it got his head blown off in Dallas, Texas. Because he tried to, de like, that's the thing. Kennedy tried to de-escalate the whole, like, situation in Vietnam, and he was going to pull everyone out because it's just like, the country's lost. And also, the southern Vietnam government hasn't done itself any favors by being absolutely un like unlikable in every way. And he was like, yeah, we're pulling out. Then he's just like... No, war's good for the economy. And then next thing you know, bang, headshot. Mm -hmm. Then Lyndon Johnson, Mr. Warmonger, comes in there. He's just like, all right, Let's you got your war. economy, boys. <laughs> oh, boy. That's exactly what's about to happen. World War III is about to start because our economy has to be fixed. And instead of it being all about war, we could do it the logical way, but yet our government just doesn't want to. It's much easier to sacrifice a shit ton of the population to fix the economy than it is to do it the logical way. God. All right. But, <clears throat> anywho, we didn't mean to bring all y'all down with this, but it's just how we feel. So it's this was... It's just how the world is, too. Yeah. This was r slash anti-work. Man, shut the whole thing down. Hopefully y'all enjoyed. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. Y'all be good people. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.